Today, I want to show you guys three different ways to use the new AI tool in Photoshop called Generate a Fill in your own photography. There's been so much talk about AI in terms of how it can affect your photography career, but I honestly think that it's going to be something that could benefit you if you learn to use it. So that's exactly why I wanted to make this video and show you guys three different ways that I'm going to be using this new generative fill tool in Photoshop with my own photography. But real quickly, before I continue, I do want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Adorama. Adorama is an industry leading retailer that has been serving photography, videography, and audio customers for almost 50 years now. Their motto is everyone is creator and they do their best to unleash that creator within us all by providing us with the tools and expertise necessary to get the job done right. I personally shop at Adorama for both the great deals on products I use and recommend, plus the great customer service on those products as well. If you find yourself interested in any products I talk about in today's video, check the links that are going to be in the description area below and be sure to use those links if you decide to order any of those products. On the screen right now is the first photo that I'm going to be working on. And this is actually a behind the scenes photo for another photo that I'll show you guys on the screen right now. But I wanted to basically show you guys how I would remove this entire light setup from this photo to basically remove a huge distraction from my photo using that new generative fill tool in Photoshop. Like I said before, this is just a behind the scenes photo, but somebody has suggested when I shared it on Facebook originally that I remove the light setup because it does look nice on its own, but I just found it extremely difficult to remove the light setup. So I wanted to see if this tool can do that job that I previously could not do. In case you guys are wondering about the light setup, it's the Explore 300 Pro with a 35 inch softbox. So what I'm going to do right now is just basically grab any sort of select tool. So the lasso tool or the marquee tool, you can use either of those. I'm going to use the lasso tool. I'm going to go ahead and select the entire light setup. And then I'm going to go ahead and select, I think this is somebody's shoes and the light stand and their elbow. And then all you have to do is two clicks, generate a fill and then generate. And then you just have to wait and see what happens. And here are the results for that new generative fill layer. You do want to go ahead and check out the other variations because every time you do this generative fill, you get three different versions. So this is the very first version, the first variation. This is going to be the second variation. I actually really do like that first one though. Um, second one is not going to work. <laughs> Let's see this third variation. And it does look pretty decent. It might look better on the ground, I think. Let me go ahead and see that first one again. The ground actually does look pretty good. I thought for some reason it didn't look good because I was focused on the sky. I do like this guy a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and just now go ahead and get another select of the sky there just to focus on these different things, these different branches that were generated and then click again, generate a fill and then generate. And I'm pretty sure it's going to do a good job in removing those different branches. And yep, it was pretty good in removing those different distractions. And now that I'm actually seeing the photo, I didn't really think these branches over here were going to be a big distraction, but now they are. So let's go ahead and just do another two clicks or actually select it first and then do those two clicks, generate a fill, generate and see if it can remove those different uh, branches on the top there. And the branches are pretty gone, but I still see this one here. Let's see if the second variation did a better job at removing it. Yeah, and it looks a little weird. Let's see the third variation and it does look a little bit funky there. But again, I don't want to spend too much time, but if I, you know, let's go ahead and just select this again one more time and then two more clicks and see what happens. And yes, I actually do really like this result. And that was extremely, extremely easy. I can't emphasize how crazy just doing this right now with you guys was because when I've previously tried to remove that softbox, it took forever to get pretty okay, decent results. And this was just very, very quickly with you guys. And I was able to do it just really quickly within seconds. And I just, I'm just, Honestly, just freaked out by how crazy fast that was. Now that the softbox is removed, let's go ahead and go to the next photo. This photo is from when I was in Japan in 2019 with Sony. And I wanted to go ahead and think of a very dramatic client in the past that I've had where they were requesting very, you know, unrealistically, Hey, can you Photoshop me out into a different, you know, a different background? Can you change the background? I think I did try to figure out how to do that and I didn't, you know, successfully do it. But I have seen people use this tool, this generative fill tool in Photoshop to do that. So I wanted to see if I can do that. So let's go ahead and just select the subject. And it did select this guy here. Let me just go ahead and move this bar right here, this contextual bar. And I'm going to go ahead and just take off the selection of the guy. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the lasso tool. And let's just say right there. Now I just have her selected. And then I'm going to go ahead and just invert the selection. Let me just actually move it back up here. 
and I'm gonna hit Control Shift I, and then now I can go to Generate a Film, and then I think since it kind of has a modern vibe, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just put it into Parking Garage, Parking Garage, and let's see what happens. And this actually looks freaking crazy good in my opinion. The lighting right there, that actually looks realistic on the ground. It looks really, really real. But that, that's just the first variation. Let's go to the second variation, see how that one looks like. This one doesn't look pretty realistic to me. The lighting's a little off some in some ways, and she looks like too tall. I think that's, yeah, she looks too tall. Let's see the third variation. It looks okay, but it looks a little too cartoonish in the background. So I would actually settle for that first variation, this one right here. Again, I can't emphasize this enough, but I've tried this before. I've tried to add somebody into another background and it just did not work. And this was so, this is very accurate and very fast. Um, but let's go ahead and go to the third way that I would use the tool. So let me go ahead and switch the photo. So on the screen right now is a photo of me, my mom and my brother. And I wanted to just demonstrate how I would remove somebody from a photo like this. Let's go ahead and just select my brother. And then, you know, you do want to be a little bit careful around the edges of, you know, where my mom's clothing and her arms are because if you sample too much then it will alter that a little bit too much so i'm just going to be very careful but i'm going to go ahead and just select the entire you know my entire brother there and now again click generate a fill and then generate and see what happens and it did a pretty good job at removing him but i think because i didn't get so close to you know my mom's shoulder here and stuff it did add some clothing right here to the back of her arm um, but yeah, he's gone. So let's see the before and here's the after. Again, this photo is not completely accurate because I wasn't careful with my selection around my mom's shoulder there. But let's just pretend that I wanted to do something else. Let's say pretend that I wanted to just extend the crop. So what I'm gonna do right now is use the crop tool to extend it a little bit to the left so that me and my mom are in the center. And then I'm actually going a little bit to the bottom as well. I'm gonna extend it a little bit to the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit enter now. And now what I'm gonna do is get the marquee tool and just select this area right here. And I am going a little bit over into the image so that it has something to sample from. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select this bottom area right here, a little bit over the shoes. And now that I have it selected, again, two more clicks, generate a fill, generate, and let's see how well it does in extending the image. And this actually looks pretty, pretty good. But let's see the second variation. I think I might like this one better, but let's see the third variation. Okay, so this is a little bit funky with this house here. So let's just stick with the second variation. But I just basically removed my brother from the shot and changed the framing. I uncropped this shot so that me and my mom were more towards the center. Yeah, so basically I just removed my brother and extended the image. So let's go ahead and just move on to the last way that I would use this tool. Okay, so here with this last photo, I wanted to do several things. I wanted to basically change her shoes and also extend the image as well. So let's go ahead and just jump right into that. Let's just pretend that Sam was like, you know what? I wish I had not worn the heels. I wish I had worn my boots instead. So what I'm gonna do is just select a little bit of her leg here and the bottom of her shoes. And then basically, instead of just leaving it blank, I'm gonna go ahead and go to generate a fill and then now put boots and then now click generate. And here's the result. It actually looks pretty good. It's a little funky here on the bottom. So I'm hoping the second and third variation look better. Let's go to the second variation. This one does look a little bit better. It just is a little bit weird in certain areas, but let's see the third variation. And this one is actually really, really good. I do like this. It looks realistic to me. Even if you guys felt like this result wasn't good or the other two variations weren't good, you can keep using this generative fill tool to make new shoes or create other types of boots. So let me go ahead and just show you guys, you know, the pullback show you guys how the boots look like. I think it looks really good. And that's pretty much it for this video. I know some of you guys might be thinking who would want to change the shoes or something like that. Who would want to change the background? But there are crazy clients out there. So if you can use this tool to keep up with those demands and you know charge them extra for these demands and you can do it very easy in Photoshop, then why not? And that's pretty much it for this video. I want to give one last thanks to Adorama for sponsoring this video. It really does allow me to make more videos for you guys. So definitely check them out. Take care guys and I'll see you in the very next video.